What's going on, everybody? It's Webster Style and Brian Saff from the NRW Checkpoint with another trailer reaction for Nerds Rule the World. And this one, we're going to the MCU. Actually, we're getting small, going to the quantum <laughs> realm with the go. latest trailer for Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Man. Now, Brian, how yes. are you feeling about Ant Man coming out? Um, after, well, Okay, so I, after the first trailer, because this is the second one we're about to watch, right. I believe, I was excited for it. Now, Ant Man, you know, he's not necessarily a top tier, you know, Avenger, but um, his movies have been actually really good. Yes, I really like the 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 um the things that they've been able to do with Ant Man. I feel like Quantum Mania is going to be perfect to kick off, or well, at least the twenty twenty three run. And this will be the first movie of Phase Four, correct? Yes, it is the okay. first movie. Of phase I feel four. like it's perfect. Yeah, based on I... what I saw. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. I was gonna say based on what I saw with the trailer, it was making me kind of. It made me feel like Marvel was pressing the reset button a little bit, mm -hmm. kind of taking things back. I, I don't know for whatever reason, this new. Ant Man and the Watch, the Quantum Mania one, it kind of made me feel like I was getting ready. I mean, we're getting ready to experience like um, Iron Man once right. again, like that whole feeling around it, like starting brand new, kicking things off. I'm excited. Got you. I actually had the exact opposite reaction after the first trailer. <laughs> I was like, really? I wasn't as excited. And it, the first trailer made me feel like every other generic Marvel movie. Okay. And that was a problem. Ant Man was special. I can see um, that. One of my. I am very much about the human characters, the human characteristics of these characters. And I think the Hawkeye series is one of my favorite Marvel series because Hawkeye is a human being and Life everything and he was human it was about his family. And that is one of the things I loved about Ant-Man. Ant-Man was all about his daughter. Yeah. Uh, he was all about his family. He was a real life guy who got into a circumstance. He ended up being a superhero. Right. The first trailer... I know there's an evolution, but I feel like that it got away from that. At least for me, like the first trailer didn't convey their heart. Mm -hmm. So okay. let's check okay. out the second trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania to see if maybe my opinion is somewhat different. Right. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. All I know is Jonathan Major's going to kill his cat. <laughs> Very interesting because I don't know. I don't know how Marvel was able to do it, but they haven't really noticed as far as picking the right actors and actresses to do these. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Rewrite existence and shatter timelines. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. Daddy! He can give us a second chance. This is everything you call This gives me the heart. This is all my fault. You may not want her to watch this. We had a deal. You could win. Made a deal. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I'm sorry, Cassie.
I agree with you. Definitely, it, it comes across as almost like a reset because <sighs> Phase Four movie wise was such a letdown as a whole. As far yeah. as quality, like there are movies that I enjoyed. There's one that I will never ever watch again in life. Um, not that it was bad. It's just it, I get mad when movies squander their potential. Mm. And Thor, Rack, Thor, Love and Thunder has so much po- say it. in the potential. <laughs> and it just oh, it makes me mad to see it squandered. Uh, really, the best movies from Phase Four were, and it's Phase Four stress on. I keep forgetting Black Widow's part of Phase Four. Phase Four, which. Uh, but you know you got Shang Chi, but really Spider Man and Wakanda Forever really were the jewels of Phase Four, and, and I have my problem with Wakanda Forever personally speaking, but still mm-hmm. it was great. This one is, I think, what they really need to set off Phase Four. Excuse me, I was talking about Phase Three to set off Phase No Phase Three, yeah, Phase Five. Excuse me, yeah. So this to set off Phase Five, I. It looks like the perfect, the perfect movie to start it with, mm-hmm. uh, to open it up with. And I love this one of the things I hate about the internet. They're comic book fans, they're geeks, right. blurs. We eating good. Stop right. complaining about <laughs> everything. Oh my goodness. The vitriol about that the yellow jacket is now look, it's not really a spoiler if you watch the trailer. Yellow jacket is Mo Bonak, Modoc. And yeah. I guess we figure out how that happens. I'm like, why people could it, they put Modoc in the movie? Right. The fact that he's there, regardless of how they created him and his origin, how they related him, it's Modoc right. in the freaking MCU. <laughs> why are you getting your panties in a bunch? <laughs> right. I, I don't know. Good. The the I don't know. Marvel fans. I will, well, comic book fans in general, but I'll speak specifically to Marvel fans since we are talking about Marvel. I don't think, I don't think most Marvel fans have put together that this, all of this is intentional. Like mm-hmm. the comic books are their own entity, right. the films are their own entity. Like, of course, we need the comic books in order to give us the outline for the films. But because it's just like in the comic books, how there's like all of these different Earths and universes, Earth mm-hmm. 616 and all this other stuff. It's the same thing for the, the the movies. If you just step back a little bit, you understand like the exact same way how there's multiple Earths in the comic books. The Earth and everything that's going on in the MCU is its own thing. Just like there's right. plenty of stuff like that in the comic books. It's the same thing with the the video games they're not going to follow the movies and the the comic books to a t why because the video game marvel universe is its own thing it just it just pulls from that i think people i think once people like get that in their head like okay we're not going to see exactly what's happening in the comic books one because half of that shit is impossible (laughs) like you can't it doesn't matter how many special effects well special effects could make anything possible but what I'm saying is comic books and cartoons and stuff, they have a certain level of fantasy to them that can't necessarily right. be replicated with real people because it's it's hard to do some of that stuff. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I, I seen the, the the conversations about Modoc. I was like, I don't think people understand like Modoc is like a big <laughs> a big satire um character. Like his entire pre- he's supposed to make you laugh as soon as you look at him. He got a big ass head and right. his brain sticking out of the top. Like it's not something like, oh, he's not supposed to look menacing and evil. Like he's literally something for you to laugh at. That's the right. whole thing with Modoc. He's serious about his goals for whatever his evil plans are, but you can't take him seriously because he looked the way he looked. I don't understand why people are having a hard time digesting the content. It, but I don't it know is either. What it is. They complain. But let me tell you this though, before right. we wrap this up. There is a Jonathan Majors playing Kang. And this is one one of the beautiful things about Kang. Let me back up. So even when I was heavy in the, once again. in the books, Kang is not a character I, I came across. I, I right. even like when I was heavy into Avengers, 
Like mm-hmm. none of those storylines. Like I was uh like Steve Epting was drawing and I forget who was writing at the time. Kang was not a character uh that I was familiar with. A lot of the major Kang stories happened before my deep dive into comics. So my busy- biggest exposure to Kang was the Earth's Mightiest Avengers um uh cartoon, which is okay best cartoon hands down if you got the yeah, best avengers really cartoon like dude really they tell a really that. great story with that it, it puts some of the movies and stuff <laughs> to the shame. To shame i agree <laughs> and if you need to know where to watch that at you just open up your disney plus it's right, right exactly there. but jonathan majors as kang plays there's a a sinisterness but also a warmth at the same time so he he's a character that if you don't know, can gain your trust, can convince you. He is a, a very much like a like Harry Potter, like apostles. Like a, he is such a a smooth talking. He has that charisma, but also there's a a a warmth about his character, and even somewhat of a sympathy in it. Just mm-hmm. just from the trailers, even even going back to Loki is um. Right. I forget the how the character was phrased there, but there is he is just someone who just like you want to watch to see what happens. And then who knows what version of Kang this is that we're seeing. This may yeah, not be the final form that Rex have it. Right. You know, and he's as an actor, I can only imagine what delight you may get from playing different versions of the same same character like uh Tatiana Maslahi from Orphan Black and mm-hmm. how she just killed it playing all these different clones of the same character and I am so looking forward to how this phase is going to really grow um with um Jonathan um Majors as the villain and as Kang to see how if it's different Kangs that we see mm-hmm. if it's the same Kang and you know because of whatever happens in quantum mania he gets he gets out it gets i don't know it's there's so many different possibilities and i'm so looking forward to it and like you said this movie based on this trailer looks like the perfect way to kind of restart the Mm -hmm. mcu at least as far as what we know and expect based on phases one through three but of course we couldn't have gotten here without phase four right and that's something that people have to take into account when they're going to watch these movies and these new Disney Plus shows that are going to debut this year. Like None of this is possible without Phase 4. Literally, Kane right. was introduced to us in Phase 4 in Loki. So, like, we have to just accept the fact that Phase 4 happened. Or, yeah, Phase 4 happened. Which, to your point again, Phase 4 was fine. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of content. I'm fine with that because I love I love Marvel. So I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm excited for it though. I feel like we about to have another moment with the MCU where we kind of get our like, oh my God, Iron Man or or Captain America First Avenger once again. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna be obviously completely different because this is what movie three for Ant Man? Yes. Yeah, movie three for Ant Man second mcu property that kang is a part of pretty sure we'll see a few other avengers pop in here and there they have to you know set up the next movie and tv show so we're going with this movie i'm i'm excited for it definitely gonna be seeing it in 3d because that much visual effects like 2d just will piss me off so i'm going to pay for the glasses and we're gonna have a good time all right, so ladies and gentlemen, that's our take on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. We will definitely be there February 17th when it drops in theaters, you know, to take away some money from Avatar. <laughs> right. And of course, you are currently of Nerds Rule the World. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the NRW, on Instagram at New Release Wednesday. And of course, you're currently on YouTube, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Do it.